Thank you, Patty. If you've got a Bible this morning, John chapter 11. John chapter 11 is where we find our lesson uh, at today. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you do have a Bible. Pastor Joe always mentions there's Bibles available out there. If you, if you ever need one or forget one, uh, I'm glad that we have those available for you or anyone else that would desire to read along in God's Word today. Well, today we're going to look at a, uh, another uh, familiar chapter of John. Uh, we're going to read about a guy named Lazarus, and you know his story already, but hopefully today we can bring out some new things as we talk about amazing resurrection power. Amazing resurrection power. This far we've learned in, in the Gospel of John, as we've now reached uh, John chapter 11 in our, our book study, uh, the Gospel of John, we've learned that Jesus has revealed himself as the living water. Uh, we've saw him be the bread of life. We've watched him shine as the light of the world. And we've learned for a couple of Sundays about the fact that he's uh, our good and great shepherd uh, that leads us through uh, a world. Now he reveals himself as the resurrection. And man, this is one of those powerhouse stories from the Bible, where Jesus says, and makes a very powerful statement, and we'll, we will get to it uh, today, where he says that he is the resurrection and that he is the life. I want you to see in, in chapter 11, verses 1 through 16, obviously this chapter is quite lengthy, so probably at least the last point you're going to have to read and study out for yourself. But I'll give you the highlights uh, uh, of the entire chapter. In verses 1 through 16, the Bible says this in John chapter 11. He says, Now there was a certain man who was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest, is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Jesus says, You know what? Because he's God, and he's aware of the sickness, but it's not going to rattle Jesus Christ because he's King of kings and Lord of lords, and he can heal, and he can raise up from the dead. Amen. He's got the power to do that. And I want you to see that this sickness that Jesus says, it's not unto death because he knows. Now the rest of the characters in the story, they don't quite understand it yet. But Jesus knows what he's going to do and when he's going to do it. And it doesn't matter if Lazarus has been dead one day or four. When Jesus shows up and reveals himself as the resurrection... And as the life and the light of men, he can overcome all those obstacles. And so the, the scripture is teaching us plainly that this sickness is for the glory of God in that, that Jesus Christ is going to reveal himself by saying, Lazarus, <laughs> you know the scripture, right, class? Come forth. And you know what he did? Help me. He came forth. Now, the sisters didn't quite get the whole pictures here. And they didn't understand that when Jesus Christ was talking about the resurrection, he says, look, yes, there is a resurrection of the dead, but you're looking at resurrection power right here, right now. Now, that excites me today because that's the same Jesus Christ that lives within me. Amen? That's the same Jesus Christ that lives within you. Verse 5. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and, and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Did you see this in verse 6? Jesus is not excited about somebody being sick or even dying. Amen? That's not like us. If we're very sick, we want help, and we want it now. Amen? Amen? Jesus doesn't get excited about it. He says in verse 7, Then after that saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, 
and thou goest there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of his sleep. There's a couple of things I want you to notice that are noteworthy in, the, in what the story we've read so far. Jesus loves people. He loves you and me. Amen? Do you notice he says that he loves his friend? He loves Mary. He loves Martha. Listen, Jesus Christ is the great lover of all people today. Now, he doesn't love our sin, but he certainly loves the sinner. Right, class? He certainly loves the sinner. And Jesus calls Lazarus friend. I like having Jesus Christ as a friend that the Bible says sticks closer than a brother. Amen? He's that friend today. Verse 12. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. In other words, hey, Lord, if he's sick and he's sleeping, it's probably for his good. Hey, listen, many times when we're sick, sometimes sleep helps us, amen? Amen? How many of you are going to take a nap this afternoon? You're not even sick and you're going to take a nap. In an air-conditioned room, amen? They're not getting the picture here. How be it Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of him taking rest and sleep. Verse 14, man, is one of those verses where... Bam! Jesus just nails it. He says this, Then said Jesus unto them plainly, three words, Lazarus is dead. Right? He's dead. Verse 15, And I am glad for your sakes that I, let's look at the scripture, that I was not there to the intent ye may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. Jesus says, look, I'm glad I wasn't there because I'm going to show up and you are going to see another miracle I am going to perform. You know why? Because I am said so, and I am the resurrection from the dead. Verse 16. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us go also that we may die with him. I want you to see in verses 11 through 16, and this is the point that I made in these 16 verses. Point number one, expect the unexplainable. Expect the unexplainable. So much of our lives today, we can see God work and move and do things, and we can see God doing it, though we can't quite explain it all. Right, class? Expect the unexpected. Expect the unexplainable. As this chapter o opens, the verses we've read tells us that Jesus has a good friend, Lazarus. He's very ill. The Bible says he is the brother of Mary and Martha. He lives in Bethany. And it would appear throughout the scripture that Jesus would often visit Jerusalem and he would often spend nights in their home. And Mary and Martha send Jesus a message about Lazarus and verse 3 says, Lord, now I like the fact that they're calling him Lord, amen? Amen, they're calling him Lord straight out of the gate. Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus gets that news, he is on the east side of Jordan, about a day's journey, 20 miles from Bethany. Because Mary and Martha know Jesus loves him very deeply, they expect him to immediately respond. But that wasn't his response. The Bible says in verse 6 that Jesus waits two days. Most of us don't like to wait two minutes on things, amen? Imagine, some, imagine one of your friends is nigh unto death and you call him and say, Hey, I love you, brother. Hey, you know what? I'll see you in a couple days. But listen. Jesus Christ was no ordinary man, right? 
So a two-day delay, not going to be any big deal. We need to remember this. And we need to be reminded of this all the time. That when you consider this incident, that many times God does not immediately answer our prayers. Right, class? Oftentimes we pray, and it's a lot more than two days. Sometimes it can be two years. Sometimes it can be many years. Sometimes it can be two seconds, and God answers. Amen? Maybe in our lives we've prayed for someone who's suffering from a, a terrible disease and God hasn't answered yet. There are all kinds of problems in this life that we pray about, but I just want you to understand this, that there is a great verse, and this is a verse in the Bible today, and in fact, I want you to turn over, because it's so close, turn over to John chapter 13, verse number 7, this morning for just a moment. And I want you to look at John chapter 13, verse number 7 there, and I'm not, I'm not and we'll get there in a few weeks, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to go get all the story of verse 13 started to get to verse 7. But there Jesus is going to reveal to us that certainly he is sovereign God, and God is always going to answer, but it's always on his schedule. And he will give us understanding, maybe not right now, and sometimes it's down the road. Sometimes it's around the block we've been, and God gives us understanding about what happened. Look at verse 7. Jesus answered and said unto them, what I do, thou knowest not when, class, now. Jesus says, what I do now, maybe you don't quite comprehend it yet. It's like when God is doing something in our lives and we can't quite get the full scope or the big picture of it. We just live day by day by faith, amen? Look at the rest of verse 7. But thou shalt know hereafter. I can look back in my life. You can look back in your life. And there were times when I had questions about what God was doing. You ever have those? God, what are you doing? God, why did you... You ever ask this question? God, why did you allow this? Or why did you cause this? Come on, say yes. And we don't get the grasp, the... the, the the work that God's doing right then, right now. But then down the road, we get the picture. And we look back, and we think back, and we remember back, and we say, you know what, God? You knew exactly what you were doing all the time. Amen? Jesus says, you may not quite understand what's all going on here, Mary, Martha, Lazarus. But you can understand that the reason for the sickness, the reason for the death, is that I am once again going to be glorified, and I'm going to prove once again that I am the giver of life. God wants us to know how much Jesus loved Lazarus and his sisters. Jesus didn't immediately respond to the request. It wasn't because he didn't love them. It's because he had a different plan. It's always good to have a plan of some kind, amen? But I tell you, there's only one perfect plan, and God's got it. Amen? God has it. Don't ever let your confidence in God's love be shaken when he fails to answer your prayers in the way that you expect. Can you imagine how, how spoiled as people of God that we would be if God answered every single one of our prayers in the affirmative. Can you imagine? You know what would happen? I know what would happen. We'd quit praying, amen? We'd quit praying. We would think about it. God do this, and God would do it. Bam. God do this, God do this. Bam. Instantaneous answers to prayer. Bam. All day long. Listen. He's God. We're not. And we can make requests. And we should. And we should make petition, and we should. But I want you to know today that when Jesus Christ answers in the affirmative, it may be today, or it may be 50 years from now. 
And God may never grant it. But you know what? God knows best, amen? He's looking out for his kids. He's looking out for his children. Sometimes God allows things to happen that we just don't understand. And if you think today that just because someone has been given the ability to teach and to preach God's word that guys like myself and others have all the answers, can I tell you, man, you are, you are wrong. There are times when I say, God, I don't know. I've had people ask me questions. God, why did, this, why did God allow this to happen? And I simply say, I don't know. All we can do is pray about it, amen? All we can do is trust God. And somewhere down the road, God will teach us why it went that way. God has a divine purpose today for every problem he allows. I believe that today, don't you, class? I believe God has a divine reason. He has a divine purpose. He has a plan for every problem he allows. Therefore, Jesus says that Lazarus' death, in verse 4, will ultimately be for the glory of who? Lazarus? Mary? Martha? No. Who's it going to glorify? God Almighty. That's why this story plays out the way it does. It's that the Son of God may be glorified. Then after two days, Jesus tells his disciples they're going back to Judea. The disciples can't understand why Jesus wants to go there since some Jews there want to stone him. And he responds this way, and I noted earlier, our friend Lazarus. Class, we need friends in this world of ours. Amen? We need friends in our world. He says, but I go that I may awaken him out of his sleep. You can imagine the disciples. They don't understand. They obviously think that if Lazarus is sleeping, he will get better. Therefore, Jesus tells them plainly, blatantly, black and white, big letters, can't miss it. In verse 14, Lazarus is dead. If someone is sleeping, they eventually wake up. Right, class? Amen? Some of us take longer naps than others. Some of us can sleep through a freight train 10 feet apart or away. And some of us can be awakened by the smallest of noise. You fit in that realm somewhere, amen? Whether it's a, a bomb in the next room or, or a, a butterfly flying over your head. <laughs> if you are asleep, you will at some point awaken. Jesus says, he's not sleeping, he's dead. I want to understand that for a believer today, this is an awesome promise, death is falling asleep one place and waking up in another. Amen? That's what it is for a believer. We fall asleep one place, by the way, we wake up in a whole lot better one. Amen? I could tell you some stories, and you have some too, about being awakened. Maybe sometimes in a hurry when you weren't ready. Amen? It's what happens to a believer. Finally, led by Thomas, the disciples finally decide to go with Jesus, even if it was going to cost them their life. So point number one, expect the unexplainable. Point number two, express your concerns to God. God wants us to talk to him today. God wants us to to, to have conversation with him even this morning. And when things concern us, God already knows about it, and we need to talk to him about it. That's the point in verses 17 through verses 37. I don't have time to read all those verses today. The Bible says that when Jesus arrives in Bethany, many people are there to comfort Mary and Martha. When, when Martha hears Jesus is approaching, she goes out to meet him, and she says this to, to the Lord, 
if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Lord, if you'd have been here, he wouldn't have died. This means she believes if Jesus had been there, he could have healed Lazarus. However, Martha doesn't believe Jesus can raise the dead. And you can read this story as it plays out in the rest of the chapter. Jesus says to Martha, Thy brother shall rise again. And Martha responds, I know that we sh he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Slightly confused here, Martha was. Hey, listen, don't, don't slam on Martha because I'd have been saying the very same thing. And you would have too, amen? Don't act like you're some supersized, spiritualized Christian this morning and you'd have had the right answer. Jesus, in essence, was saying this, or Martha was, in essence, saying this. The resurrection, and Jesus was conveying this truth. The, resurre the resurrection that takes, is going to take place here momentarily is not something that you have to wait on. The resurrection, the Christ, the Messiah, is standing right before you. And that's why he blatantly says, I am the resurrection. Jesus asked her if she believes uh, b those who believe in him will never die. And Martha responds, she says, he is the Christ, the Son of God. But listen, she still has no hint. She still is not looking ahead to the fact that Jesus Christ is going to resurrect her brother Lazarus. And he's going to do it very soon. I think about this today, that one day in the very new, near future, I believe the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back to rapture his church out. Amen? I don't know the exact wording of, of the shout, but there's going to be a come up somewhere. Amen? Because those who've passed on before are coming out of those old graves. Amen? Amen? It is a beautiful picture of what is to come for the children of God when Lazarus, who was dead, is going to come forth out of a grave. That is resurrection power, class. Amen? Martha goes and tells her sister Mary. The Master has come in verse 28. Mary then goes out to meet Jesus, and she says, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother had not died. In other words, Lord, where were you when I needed you? Can I tell you this, class? There's times in our lives that are just like that, when things go bad, and we say, Lord, where are you? Can I tell you, the Lord hasn't went anywhere. He still lives in here, amen? The Lord's working whether we realize it or not. It is important to note this, that the Lord doesn't rebuke he doesn't chastise Martha or Mary for being honest about their feelings. He doesn't do that. God wants us to be honest. And he wants us to tell him how we really feel. Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. God wants us today to pour our hearts out to him. And even when we go through times of discouragement, even when we go through times of disappointment, even sometimes when we don't understand what God is doing, God wants to hear from his children. The second point, express our concerns to God. After Jesus sees Mary and the others with her are still weeping because they don't understand the truth of the whole story at this point. We then come to verse 35. It's the shortest verse in the whole Bible. If you say you can't memorize Scripture, start here. Amen? Start here. You only got two words. Can you get that? What did Jesus do? He wept. The question comes, why did Jesus weep? You ever thought about that? You want the answer? Buy me lunch, I'll give it to you. You don't have to buy me lunch. Why did Jesus cry there? 
Was it because Lazarus was dead? No. I've got resurrection power. He's coming out in a little bit. By the way, if you're there in Jesus' day, I want to tell you, when somebody who's dead lives again, all right, I just got to tell you that sometimes I'm slow to believe. I'd have been a believer that day, would you? I mean, when somebody says they're God, they're the resurrection, hey, Lazarus is dead, Lazarus comes forth, Lazarus comes out, he's alive, he's God. Amen? He is who he says he is. That wasn't the reason that Jesus wept. Because Jesus knows he will soon raise Lazarus from the dead. Jesus wept, I believe, because even his closest friends did not believe in his power. Say, George, that's terrible. No different than today, class. There are people today who refuse the power, the resurrection, and the story of the gospel of Jesus Christ in our world today. Amen? It's just as tragic in our world today when people say no to God, I don't need that, I don't need religion, by the way, you don't need religion, you need Jesus. Amen? The same tragedy plays out in our world, the same thing plays out in our neighborhoods today. You talk to people about Jesus, I ain't got time for that, don't need God, don't need Jesus, uh, too many hypocrites, you just fill in the blank, make up all the excuses. It's just as tragic in our world today, and the results are just as bad when people say no to God today, amen? There's no good ending to that. Jesus wept because his closest friends, many of them, did not believe in his resurrection power. But oh, they were about to see it. Verses 38 through verses 57. Jesus comes to the tomb where Lazarus is buried. The Bible teaches us it's a cave with a stone lying against the entrance. Verse 38. Standing by the tomb, Jesus tells the mourners to remove the stone. Get it out of the way. Martha has some concerns. It's been four days, Lord, this is going to have a bad smell to it. He takes it, because the Bible says it's now four days later. Jesus then utters some very powerful words. Lazarus come forth and he came back to life class today there's coming a day that Jesus Christ is coming back for his own amen who knows when that's going to be the wonderful Pharisees of the day were not really excited about what had just taken place we have talking about the Pharisees in many occasions in John the gospel of John they now call a meeting. They're upset about it. A meeting of the Sanhedrin. That was the Jewish Supreme Council, Supreme Court of the day. And toward the, the, toward the latter part of the chapter, they made a plot that they were going to put Jesus to death. And one day, Jesus Christ did die on an old rugged cross, right? But guess what? He lived again, amen? Amen. Why is that? He's resurrection power. He is amazing resurrection power. And people today, and I pray that it happens, will come into a service like this or a Sunday school class like this, and the Bible says that they come into this world a sinner. They're, they're dead. The Bible says they are dead, guilty in trespasses and sins, and yet they can experience new spiritual life today because the God we serve is not controlled or not contained by death. The Bible gives us this wonderful verse over in the book of Philippians chapter 3 verses number 10. The Bible says there it was a it was a it was a request that Paul had the great apostle Paul. It was a request and here's what it was. To know Christ and the power of His resurrection. Now when I stop this morning 
And I ponder all the things in John chapter 11. And I think about resurrection power today. It makes us seem pretty small, amen, as human beings. But when I think about what all we are in Jesus Christ today, the fact that we've been given a home in heaven that we're going to experience, the fact today that Jesus Christ was not going to let the story of Lazarus end negatively, that he was going to wind it up on a positive note, and he was going to do it all for the glory of God, and Lazarus lived again. Class, you and I, we've known people, who knows, Maybe this time next week one of our loved ones will be gone from this world. But I want you to know if they died in Christ, thank God, they're going to live in Christ. Amen? They're going to live in Christ. And they live again. By the way, it's a far better place than Connorsville, Indiana. Amen? No knock on Connorsville. No knock on America. It does not compare with the glory which is to come. Why is that possible today? I'll tell you why. Jesus is the resurrection. Father, we thank you today for this, t this time of Sunday school. Lord, I thank you today for this great, great story that you recorded in your word. How that you are the giver of life. And Lord, for we learn again once today that you, you cannot be controlled. When someone passes, you give eternal life. Lord, thank you for raising Lazarus. Thank you for his story. Thankful today, God, that you overcame death as well. The grave could not hold you. Thank you that you are alive forevermore. Thank you for the great promise that you've given to your believers today that if this would be our last day on earth, it would be our first day in heaven. God, thank you for being so good to us. God, I pray right now for the service to follow. Pray for Pastor Joe as he comes to preach. I pray, God, that you would help us today, Lord, to be able to cut out the things of this world for a few moments and just concentrate on your word today. God, I again thank you for the faithfulness of these, your people. Thankful. Lord, that they love you first and foremost. They love your word. They love to learn. And God, for all that, I thank you. We ask and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being in our Sunday school hour this morning. Begin our main worship service in about 18 minutes.